coronavirus, boredom, boredom. <laughs> Everybody's bored because they're at home. Everybody's bored. So now you see people who are going out to parks or people are even having picnics, social distancing picnics um, and the such, or people are visiting their family and standing six feet away and uh, you know, all, all that fun stuff. Um, why are we so bored? It's, it's like we've been home for 10 years. It's only been a couple months. Did you know that? It's only been a couple months. Well, to some people, a couple months seems like a century. So why is that? Why do we get bored so easily? Why do we always need a constant distraction? That is what we are going to talk about today. So sit tight. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jen. All right. So you guys have not heard a million videos already on coronavirus, quarantine. It's just plastered the internet and everywhere. And I've done a bunch of videos on it already. And um, what more could we talk about, really? Well, let's talk about this issue with people being very bored, being at home. And I know I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, how I'm not bored because I'm working on my creative projects. I actually really enjoy the time away from other people because I can now focus on things that I want to focus on. So, but some people are so bored. They're so bored. They feel like their freedom is being uh, taken away from them. They opened up the parks, at least in New Jersey they did, um, for just passive activities like walking, running, stuff like that. Can't play contact football or things like that. And people are still breaking the rules. <laughs> Why are people still breaking the rules? Because we can't go two months without playing touch football? I don't know. I think it can wait, but maybe for some people it can't. They just have like this dying need to go out and do something. This is our addiction. This is our addiction to constantly feeling like we need to distract ourselves. Now, I know I, I talked about the addiction to being busy in my very first video on YouTube back in December, I think it was. If you guys want to check it out, it's low quality and, well, it's not that low quality, but no microphone, but it's, um, it's okay. It's okay. There's a lot of good, good insight into it. So. Um, but I want to bring it up again because I feel like it's, it's happening. It's happening again where we always have to distract ourselves somehow. And it's like, I don't know what, what the thing is with some people where they, they cannot sit at home. I think part of it is the more you are bored, the more you have to listen to your own thoughts maybe i could be wrong but i think that might be a big part of it the need for for distraction is so powerful especially now we have technology so we are in a constant state of distraction and i always wonder you know what would happen if all the technology grids everything the cyber grids everything just went down went down and we were left with nothing what would we do? Would we actually survive? I mean, if we didn't have the internet, we didn't have our phones, we didn't have computer, we didn't have Zoom, we didn't have social media. What would we do? What would you do with your time? Maybe you would go to a park. Okay, it's nice to see people outside again, for sure. But realize that even going to a park is still distracting yourself. Going out to dinner is distracting yourself. So why we can't be still in one spot we get bored we get very very bored what is boredom really boredom is we feel like we don't have a purpose or we don't have what we're doing is not productive we're not busy we're not busy it goes back to our addiction to we need to be busy we need to be productive um you know so it, it also goes along the lines of there's a little bit of bias it's like if You've been at home in quarantine. If you haven't been productive or you haven't been remodeling your home or you haven't written that book you wanted to write and you're, you are just sitting home with nothing to do, then you're not a valuable human being of some sort. 
you know so there's like it goes both ways it's like our need for distraction and to go out and to break the rules and to my neighbor down the street they're the apartment building they're having like a picnic outside and they're all drinking without masks and they're within six feet and everything right in the middle of everything and and I'm like why why you know I mean I don't you know I think part of it is also people are afraid that either people don't care or they're just afraid that um, by not following the the uh, the breaking of the rules or something that it's in a way showing you're vulnerable or showing you're still afraid of this virus where you have an only you know less than one percent chance of of dying from or very very low chance of actually getting it it's like <laughs> you're still afraid like it's been two months man like I'm going out I'm going to play football I'm going to have a picnic I'm going to my parents blah 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 and all this stuff and, you know, let me first say that I am all about just staying at home. I'm happy. I don't feel the need to exert my energy to fight, to go play football or something or to toss a ball around. I don't. To me, it's not worth my time. I don't care enough. To some people, they care. They, something they, they feel hurt that they're being controlled in some way or that their freedom is really being uh, tampered with. So they have to fight it or they have to, you know, complain about it, invent about it, or they have to, they want to go back out to work. Okay, that's legit. I understand that. You know, it, it's funny because it reminds me of almost high school, peer pressure. So you could either be pressured by the people the cool kids who are out having a picnic down the street and they're, they're enticing you with their red solo cups as you walk by. Like you have to walk in the street because they're filling up the sidewalk. So anybody who walks by has to like walk by the street where cars are always zooming by and stuff. And I'm just like, okay. So you could either be enticed by the cool kids over there, or you could be enticed by just following the rules, government, right? Follow the rules, government. Right. It's like it, it is. It's like high school. <laughs> it's funny. I'm laughing right now. I'm like, it is so like high school because it's like, yeah, go the rebellious way or follow the rules and be nice to the teacher and, and everything. You know, it's kind of what, what we're dealing with. If you think about it right now, which way do you go? Which way do you go? Do you stay home or do you not stay home? I mean, it's been two whole months. It's been two months, man. This is like a lifetime. What would you do if you had no access to social media, no internet, no Zoom, no YouTube, nothing, no TV? What would you do today? I want you to answer that. If you want, put it in the comments below because I'm curious to hear if, if you did not have, and I know some of my friends are very creative, so you know they'll probably say things like writing or um, journaling or, you know, making music, painting. But do you think you could go a whole day without any sort of media, technology? And if you say yes to that, do you think you could go an entire week? Could you go an entire month? Could you go a year without YouTube, without TV, without social media, without the ability to text somebody. Could you go that long? Especially if you were by yourself. Just a question. You know, it's, it's interesting. I always think back to um, natural disasters. Hurricane Sandy. When Hurricane Sandy happened in, what was it, 2012? It was, we had the TV. I was living with my parents at the time and my grandfather, who was still alive, who had dementia, was staying with us, which was, which was interesting. And we had a generator hooked up, so we got a little bit of TV so we could see what was going on. Um, but other than that, it was like no cell phones, nothing. And I remember I, um, part of me kind of liked it. I went to bed early every night because it got dark and we didn't have electricity for a while. And um, 
I, um, I would like work out in my room or I'd be reading or studying or whatever I was doing at the time and uh, by candlelight or flashlight, whatever I did. And uh, there's something nice about it. And I remember this one evening in particular, afternoon, evening, whatever it was, where my family and I were all sitting in the living room, all sitting in the living room with this one little like transistor radio on, um, on like the table in the middle of us all. And we were trying to like, you know, it was very staticky. We were trying to get a station to come in. We finally got a station to like half come in. And we we're all sitting around this little transistor radio listening to the news or maybe the television wasn't, wasn't work, working, the generator or whatever at the time. So we had a little battery powered transistor radio. And something about it, even though it was like going back years and years, right, where you're all sitting around this little radio, which is what people used to do for entertainment, um, there was something nice about it. It was, nice. it was like, hey, I'm like with my family. We're all together. We're not distracted. We're all focused on the same thing, like what's going on right now. And we, that is like the only thing we're focused on because we don't have any other distractions. I can't pull my phone out and be texting somebody while half listening to this radio or half listening to my mother's conversation, which is what we do, you know? I do it because we have these devices or we're watching TV or we're thinking about something else and we're so distracted. So this kind of, in a way, natural disasters, I'm not saying they're, they're a good thing, but in a way, they're a way to that kind of bring us back to old times where people were together more and they were less distracted because they didn't have power. They didn't have the internet and all this kind of thing. So it's, uh, it's, it's something very interesting. And I think right now that's why it's very difficult for us to be at home or to feel like we're bored because when we're at home, we, we don't know what to do with ourselves. We don't know what to do with ourselves. And what I want to say to that, if you don't know what to do with yourself, where you always feel like antsy, where you need to go out, it's like, oh, I need to, I need to, um, it's like a drug, right? It's like, I need to go get my fix. You know, I need to go out, I need to go to a park or I need to uh, go to a bar or I need to go to a restaurant or I need to go over somebody's house. I need to talk to somebody. We can't just sit with ourselves. So that may say something about you if you are having trouble sitting with yourself and being with yourself. That says a lot. It says a lot. Um, so that's kind of just the gist, my little rant for today, what I wanted to mention. I know there's a lot of things involved there, but uh, if you have any comments about it or your thoughts on the matter, please leave them below. Let me know what you think. Um, whether you think this is an issue, why, why you think people are having such a hard time sitting at home, even though it's been, it, it's not like it's been 10 years, the people, they feel like, okay, it's been long enough. It's been two months. All right. Time's up. Okay. Virus gone. Like whatever. Everything's back to normal because I'm fine. And, um, it's just an, an interesting thing how people's minds work. So let me know in the comments if you would. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. I put out a video every single morning. Hit that little notification bell. Get a ding when a new video goes up. Other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day and peace.